All right, so we'll go ahead and get started uh, today. And uh, our, our major goal today is to cut a plan of this building. So like I've said, we've been working kind of over the next last class, this class, and um, on next Monday, we're kind of going over how do you get quality line drawings out of your Rhino? You spend all this time doing a model. How do we get good quality line drawings out of that model and uh, you know, can easily create the plans, the elevations, and the sections? Um, this folds into your assignment 205. Remember, you're going to be picking two of the three. So we're going to do an elevation. We did that last class. Today, we're going to do the plan. And next Monday, we'll do the section. And those are kind of the, the three big drawings that we'll go through um, in creation. What we're doing today in the plan is almost identical to what we're doing in the section. The difference being that we're just changing the plane, right? A plan is essentially a section that's horizontal. Um, a section view that is a traditional line section would be a view that's vertical. So we're just going to make subtle changes between now and Monday to, to create these. Uh, as I've said before, when we work on these files, it is totally destructive. So we want to make sure we do a save as before we go ahead and start working with this. Uh, I went ahead and opened my, <coughs> excuse me, my master site ocean today. I'm going to do a file and then save as. And I'm going to save this one. I have master site elevation. This is going to be master site plan. And I'll go ahead and do save. So this is absolutely critical that we do that because we're going to start causing harm to our drawings. And that's why I want to make sure that I did it live for you as well. So when we start to think about this, we're going to be working in multiple views here. Um, the bulk of what we're doing, we don't really need the whole ocean, for example, to, to worry about the sand or the, the plan view. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off that giant ocean plane because we really just don't need it. And then I'll go ahead and create a sectional plane. Uh, actually, this is just a regular rectangular plane that's larger than everything that's left. And we'll go ahead and draw it right like that. Now, this plane, we want to make sure that it passes through our building at the right place for our plan. Now, typically, in, in, uh, in a building, we would cut that plan view at four feet above the finished floor. So if my finished floor was here, for example, we'd be going up four feet. Now, I'd like to be able to show this downstairs room and this upstairs room when I do the plan. So as a result, I'm going to go ahead and move that plane up. We'll move this straight up. Let me turn on ortho so it's going straight up. And rather than measure, I'm going to make sure that it is below my upper floor plan, but above this floor. So it's not quite four feet, but it's sufficient for what we're trying to do. And for clarity purposes, I'm going to move that onto its own layer. So let me come up here. I'm going to add a layer. We're going to call this plan. And I'm going to do a sublayer for um, plane. And I'll move this giant green plane onto that layer. Let me change object layer. And just so that we're clear, I'm going to keep it a color. So let's make it green. Go ahead and say okay. And there it is, just so that we know what it is and where it is. We'll use that as a reference as we start to work with our file. So let's use that as a reference, but let's use the V-Ray clipping plane right now to actually take a look at our plan view. So I'm going to go ahead and use the V-Ray clipping plane tool right here. It's going to ask me for the first corner of the rectangle. I'm just going to copy that rectangle that I just created like that. And if I did it correctly, it should clip right at my uh, building. If I were to turn off this plane, we can see that it cut right through my building. And uh, it looks like it filled in that, that space right there which is a little odd. Uh, it must be because there's no windows in this space as to why it, it filled it in. But this will let me get this set up to kind of view. So with this section kind of drawn, I can move into my top view and we can zoom in on 
my floor plan. And so we want to see that clipping plane. Uh, why is it not showing in this view? It should be showing in this view as well. Maybe we have to always pleasant. It should be showing. Why is it not showing? You gotta love it when things don't do what they're supposed to do, right? Uh, let's do it in the, we'll just reset this up manually. So since it's showing in the render view, we'll, we'll work through it. So let's, um, <coughs> let's change this. We'll go to set view and let's go to our top view and see if it shows now. There we go. Um, not sure why it wasn't updating for me. And once I have this view established, I'm going to go ahead and save it so I can come back to it. Let me go to set view and then named views. And I'm going to call this one plan. And so while I'm doing this, I'm also going to get the viewport boundaries like I did last class so that when I do the make 2D, I'm able to um, use that to my advantage. So let me go ahead and show this camera. I'm going to go to set camera and then show camera. And then we'll look at it in one of these other views. I'm going to switch the top view here into perspective. So let me go to set view and I'll go to perspective. We're seeing our camera. Let's switch over into my, um, let's go to just wireframe. I'm going to turn on my point snap and nothing else. And I'll use a rectangle to snap from this point to the center of my camera, which is conveniently hidden here. All right, sometimes you have to follow it. It's right there. And if I did it correctly, this rectangle that I just created should be exactly a quarter of my overall plan view, which it is. So let's go ahead and scale that up so it's the full size. I'll type in scale. This is just a regular scale. I'm scaling from this corner by two. And now it's going to fill up my whole viewport. And that's, that's something that's important when we go to do the make 2D of this particular view. So let me come back to the plan view. I'm not particularly happy at how it clipped this part of the building. So I may extend this. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and do a preliminary make 2D of this view. So with this view selected, I'm going to go ahead and type make 2D. Select objects to draw all. I'll go ahead and hit enter when done. We're going to be working in the plan view. We're going to do hidden lines. And I'm going to maintain the source layers. Remember, we talked about this last time. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll call this make 2D dash plan in terms of the layer structure. And I'll go ahead and say OK. and it will build out my make 2D. Now, when it creates that, that's going to show up in the top view. So let's switch this to the top view. Let's go to set view top. I'm going to type Z for zoom, S for selected. And there is my viewport. Now, because of the clipping plane, I'm actually only getting part of the viewport because the rest of it was clipped off. Well, actually, scratch that. No, I am getting the whole thing. OK, perfect. So let's go ahead and let's trim it just to kind of clean this up a little bit there and there. Perfect. And then let's take this line drawing and let's go ahead and export it to Illustrator. So I'll go to File and then Export, Selected. And I'm going to choose my Illustrator file. So I'll go to Adobe Illustrator. And um, under our options, We'll preserve the scale. It'll be 48 to 1. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and I'll say OK. And then let's save this. I need to put it on uh, in my folder. So we need a new folder for plan. And we'll put it in there. And this is plan. And we'll go ahead and say save. 
brings up our dialog box again. We'll go ahead and say, okay. And that then exports this make 2D file. In terms of getting the output from it, we can go back to our plan view here and I could switch to just the Arctic view. Um, so we could go to our Arctic and that gives us a little bit of a, a color shadow, et cetera. It may help be helpful to edit the view a little bit. So if I go into my tools and we go to options, we can look at view, we can look at our display modes, we can go to Arctic and we can choose to turn off like I did last time, the tangent lines, the curves, and we'll say, okay. And that gets us back to here. Um, it did create this green outline. Um, which is kind of odd. Oh, it's on the site layer here. Okay, so we may need to let me select these objects. Now it's going to select them all. Um, I don't like those green objects. So the uh, the section plane though created them. I'm just thinking. Let's see if I can go ahead and turn those off altogether. Hmm. Okay, I may have to recreate the the uh, the section view to get this to look better. Uh, so let me come back here. Let me go back into my uh, render one view. I'm going to turn off Arctic. I'll go back to shaded mode. We'll recreate. I hope. Create a new layer. I should have done this in the beginning. Uh, we're going to call this plan two. Uh, it's in black, which is good. And let's go ahead and create a new section plane. So that was my old section plane. Let's go ahead and erase that. Sorry, delete that. I'm going to turn back on my big plane. And I'm just using that as a guide. We'll come back to our V-Ray clipping plane. Turn on end snap. Oops, one more time. There we go. And there we go. Then we'll go ahead and turn that off. And that looks, definitely looks a little bit better. So now that we've done that, let's switch back into my plan view. And it's so conveniently didn't do it. How about that? Oh, there we go. Now we're seeing the section. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and switch this into Arctic mode. And there we go. At least now we're seeing the lines in black rather than in, um... I wonder if I can turn those off. No, they're gonna be part of it. So uh, we'll go ahead and, and export this, or excuse me, capture it to file. Let me go to my capture to file. And this is kind of my most simple strategy for creating a kind of a background for my, my view. Uh, let's make sure that we do custom. We're going to lock the aspect ratio of the viewport and let's increase this size up a bit. So let's say maybe 3000. And then we'll go ahead and say, okay. And we'll save it into my plan folder. And we can leave it named as that. And we'll go ahead and say save. Now, to me, this still isn't that great of a background image for our line drawing. So I want to take this a step further. I want to start thinking about shadows. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and do kind of like we did with the section view. So let's go back. Let me go to set view. Let's go to my render one view. There it is. Let's switch our style back into shaded here. And now, I'm going to delete our V-Ray section plane. And then let's turn back on our big plane. There it is. And I'm going to do a split. 
And I'm going to start using that see-through material, and we're going to create a much more realistic rendering. So let's go ahead and let's do a uh, split. But in, before we do that, we need to explode all the blocks that are in the scene. So it's, again, important that we did a save as, which I did. Let's go ahead and SEL block instance explode. I'm going to type when it's done, I'm going to type SEL again. It's not responding, so let's give it a little more time. I'm going to go ahead and type SEL block instance, select any remaining blocks, and we'll go ahead and explode those. Perfect. I'm going to hit escape and then SEL block instance. No objects added to selection. Perfect. That's the way we wanted it. So now we need to start doing a split. And so let's start by splitting just the terrain. So if I were to select the terrain, I actually have two pieces of terrain here. I can go ahead and type in split. And I'm going to split them with that large green plane that I did before. There we go. So now those have been split into to two pieces. So we have a top piece and we have a bottom piece. Now let's focus on the building itself. And I'm going to do this in the side view. I'm going to go ahead and select my block. It's not a block anymore. And I'm going to type in split. And I'm going to split it with that large green plane. We'll go ahead and hit Enter. And we'll let it split. There's going to be some splits failed because not all of the objects that I just selected are going to be um, shown. Or, or split by that big plane. So we just have to let it go through and process. Are you here? Yep, there we go. Sorry, I had to wait for it to finish. So it finished its split. And now that it's finished its split, I'm going to go in and I'm going to select everything that's on the upper part of this. So we'll go ahead and do a selection group. And I'm going to come down here, making sure that I get everything that's on the upper part, like that. That includes the terrain. And once I have all of that selected, I'm going to change that to be a see-through material. So I'll open my V-Ray Asset Editor. And I should, do I already have see-through? No, I don't have it. So I need to go ahead and load it. Let me open it. And there is my see-through material. And there it is. I'm going to change the color. The color shouldn't have been red. So we'll change that uh, while I'm here because it gives a slight red hint. So I'm going to change that to black. There we go. And now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and apply the see-through material to all of those objects. That being said, there are some glass windows in here. And I would like those glass windows to still be um, usable as glass. So they need to be fully transparent. Uh, I have two options to do that. I could just turn off the glass layers when I do the rendering, which might actually be a good strategy. Or I could choose to. Um, uh, or I could choose to go through and apply a fully transparent material. I'm going to go ahead and apply the see-through material to everything that is selected. So I'll right-click and say apply to selection, which is overriding everything. And then I'm going to go through and look for my glass, any layer that contains glass. So I may need to actually 
uh, get into this a little bit more detailed here. Let's see. And we're not worried about that. This can go. So we'll turn off the glass railings. And this is why naming your, your uh, layers really matters. So it's easy to go in and, and select where the, the glass would be. Those are all can lights. Okay, so we're good. So I've now turned off where the glass would be. So now everything above this building is now showing as the see-through material. So it's as if it's there, but not. It's possible that we want to use these two pieces of, of land as actual um, like solid materials rather than see-through. We'll see what the end result looks like. So let's come back here into our right view. And this time I'm gonna select everything that is below the line, right like that. So I've selected everything that's below the line and I'm going to apply my, um, I'm gonna apply my uh, clay rendering material to that. Now, previously when we did the elevation view, we were able to come in here and choose to just override the materials which is in settings and material override. But if I did that, it would override the materials up above the see-through that I just applied. So in this case, I actually need to create a brand new material that's just kind of a plain material. So we'll click and create a new generic material. And so let me go into my materials here and we're gonna choose new generic material. And I'm going to rename that generic material to be just white. And then I'm gonna change the color of that material to be white. And so it doesn't have any reflection on it. And I'll right click and say, apply to selection. So I've just made everything below that big cut line white. So now if I hide my big plane, that green plane, and I go back to my top view. So let's go to set view and I go to plan. And we make this big. When I render this, I'm going to get it as if the shadows are being cast on the ground. So let's go ahead and do a test render of it. I'll click on the render button here, and we may need to adjust the exposure just a bit. And give it a second to, to finish its render here. I should have turned off my hair. Hold on a second, let me stop that. I have grass in this scene. So let's make sure I'm turning that off. And there we go. I'm gonna turn off the fur, so we're not getting that. And then let's try that render again. And for the interest of time, I'm gonna lower the size of this rendering. So let me go into render output. We're matching the viewport, but I'm gonna drop this size down. Uh, let's do it at 200 there, just so we can get a preview of what it looks like. And if we like it, then we'll, we'll move forward with it. So you can see that the shadow that's being cast is being cast by the whole building, which is nice. The, the ground here isn't being shown because it's, it's that see-through material. So I think the ground actually needs to be switched back to the white material. So let me stop it for a second. I'm gonna select the ground here and the ground here, <coughs> excuse me. And then I will go to white. I will right click and say, apply to selection. Now that's white. And then we can come back and we can render this again. So let me click on the render icon here. And now it's as if the rest of this was there. I'm still having a little bit of trouble seeing what's inside this. Somehow that's still filling as solid. So I'm gonna to have to investigate what the problem is. But in our room here, you can see that we're, we're getting a shadow as if the rest of the building were there, right? It's cast as if the whole building was there. And the shadow that's being cast on the ground is being cast by the whole building, which is exactly what we're after. So let's stop this rendering and let me figure out why I'm not getting good results 
on this. Let's see here. I'm gonna have to get into the details here a little bit. That's not it. Okay. So sorry, you got to give me a second to try to sort out what is the root of this problem. Do we have a maybe I cut that just a little bit high up here. Let's see. So I'm wondering if I hide this surface, whether that'll solve the problem. Let's render that again. No, we're still not showing that. Um, let's see here. It shows you that even I have issues sometimes. Oops. Yes, that's where it is. Okay. Somehow I wound up with a an exterior wall that shouldn't be there. It's that one. Let's go ahead and hide that. And then let's try this render again. No, nope, still showing up. Okay, so obviously I'm going to have to figure out what's wrong with that um, that one piece that is in my uh, in my view. It's really confusing. But once I have this, then I can save this as my um, background for my plan view, which is ultimately what I want. Um, so let's go through the Illustrator post processing part um, because I don't want you to have to sit here while I I try to figure out what's wrong with that piece because um, it's going to drive me bonkers until I get it solved. But in the interim, um, let's go ahead and bring this into Illustrator and start the collage process. So I'm going to open up Illustrator. I actually had it open from earlier today. And let's go ahead and create a brand new Illustrator file. Actually, we don't need to. We need to open an Illustrator file. So let me go to File and then Open. And we'll open up that export that I just did. So this is in our plan view and there's my illustrator plan view. We'll go ahead and say open like that. And just like before, the artboard isn't quite big enough. So let's zoom out a bit, press control minus to zoom out. And then we're gonna adjust the artboard. I'm gonna click on the artboard tool and I'm going to move it to match up with my viewport. So there and right there. And again, the advantage is that this is technically to scale. All right, so I have my uh, line drawing here. And now we can go through and we can look at our layers. Again, we've got lots of visible and hidden layers. And so we need to kind of organize that into the visible layers and the hidden layers. We may need to move this over so we see more of the layers. So what I would do is I would be picking anything that is in the visibles and i'd be grouping all of those together so those are visible let's see here oops it's not gonna let me do that let's on control and stuff don't let me do it that way no it's not gonna let me select it of course so then i would create a new layer call this one visible 
And I would take every layer that is visible and drop it into that layer there. While I'm here, I might as well create a new layer for hidden. And then I can drop the chunks that are all hidden into that layer. Do visibles. Two hiddens. Visible. Hidden. And I know that this takes time, but it's the best way of kind of organizing things. So bear with me a little bit longer. All right, and so we'll get that back up to hidden. Again, the advantage of doing it this way where it's separate, even though it's a little bit more work, is that you can control all of the visible and all of the hidden, but you can also go in and fine tune it based on individual line groups that were layers at some point. So let's look here at our visible layers. Let's select all of them. Actually, let's start with the uh, hiddens first. So let's select all of the hidden layers. So I'll make sure that nothing is selected. I'll take hidden, I'll click right next to the circle that will select all of the hidden lines. And then we'll make some edits to it. Let's go to properties. Let's go ahead and in stroke here, we're gonna make it dashed. I did it last time as a four by four. Let's make our overall thickness at 0.5. And our color is currently kind of a light gray, which may already be to our advantage. So let's change that color just a little bit. We might want to go a little bit darker. Let's come down here, maybe about like that. And now all of the hidden lines are set up as little dashed lines. So if I press control zero, um, that'll zoom in a little bit. Then let's control plus a few more times. And we can see that we've got all those hidden lines. They may or may not be relevant long-term, but now let's take a look at the visible lines. So we have a, uh, let's see here. I'm betting that these are, well, sometimes we can select them better. Hold on. Yeah, all of these are, they're too hard to read. I need to get in further. So let's take a line and let's go to select. And we'll go to same stroke color. That'll select all of the purple lines. And then we can edit them. So let's change them to black. And then let's go into our properties here. And they're already at one point. Let's increase those to maybe 1.5, make it a little bit bolder. And we can see going around. We'll have to make some modifications on some of these. We'll also have to delete some lines that just don't really belong. The inner walls. Right here, we can do that again. So let's go to select, same uh, stroke color. And I'll select all of them. And then we can change the color to be black, sorry. Like that. 
and those were at 1.5. So, oh no, I did them at two. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then we have to go in and, and kind of fine tune. So let's control plus. Sorry, I'm on Windows, I have to do control plus. Uh, and this is where we're gonna start to kind of fine tune things. So this line right here, for example, oh, darn it. Windows is killing me sometimes. There we go, that line and this line right there, those should be like the wall thickness. So we can use our eyedropper tool to match the thickness of the wall and thicken those up. So we could go through this one right there, this one right here, that one, and we will eyedropper to match. So we're just kind of working our way through the drawings. So this and this should be like that. And anyway, you get the idea. Now, some of these just need to be deleted. So this line, for example, isn't giving us anything. So we'll just select it and press delete. I hope. Of course, I'm not quite sure why it's not. There we go. I think there was just multiples on top there. This line doesn't matter, that can go away. That one can go away. That one there can go away. This one here can go away. And so there's just a certain level of cleanup to kind of make these things look good. Uh, we may need to add a line here. We're missing a, a stair. So it's not quite perfect. But you can see that I can go in and I can fix these problems relatively easily in Illustrator. Okay, so let me press control zero, not command zero, control zero, there we go. And now you can see that I have the, the basics of this plan uh, laid out. Once I have that, it's gonna be about dropping in the image that's behind. Let's see how our render actually turned out. Or maybe I didn't render it. There it is, did I render this in higher quality? No, I didn't render it. So I'll, I'll solve the problem. But let's, in the meantime, let's drop the uh, Arctic behind it. So let's go to File and then Place. And this was our view capture from here. And we'll drop that right on the corner. Let's do Control minus here, because obviously it's too big. And let's put it on its own layer rather than being on these. I should have created the new layer first before I brought it in. But let's create a new layer. We can call this background. And I'm going to drop that below all the rest of the layers. And now I can take this object, which is represented by that little square, and move it onto that background layer. Alternatively, if moving the objects is, is too challenging, click the background layer first before you bring the object in. Now, if I go to file in the place, it will show up on that background layer. So let's go ahead and drop it right there. And then we can go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. So we'll come in here. I'm gonna hold down shift to keep this in proportion and it should snap right to my drawing and it should line up because I was very careful with the viewport when I established it. Now that I have it, sorry, wrong, there we go. We can see it with its background. If the background shadowing and stuff is a little bit too intense, remember you can always drop that back. If I were to select it, I can come in here to opacity and I could drop that back a little bit so it's not quite as strong. And sometimes that, that helps the, the lines show up more than what's happening in the background. But you can see that that gives me a relatively nice, easy plan. It didn't take that long for me to create it, okay? So this is what we're doing today. I'm going to go back to Rhino and I'm going to redo this plan view one more time because I don't like that little piece that kept showing up. Um, so I'm going to do a new make 2D uh, and go back through the process. That being said, uh, you guys don't need to sit around and watch me do it. If you feel comfortable, you're free to go. If you want to watch me do it again, I'm going to continue to walk through it. I may or may not be able to solve this problem of the piece that just keeps showing up on me, uh, but I want to give it a shot and see if I can't sort it out. Uh, so let me go ahead and make perspective big again here. 
and let's create yeah no problem thank you Thanks. i'm going to turn back on that uh plane again and i'm going to go into my v-ray clipping plane and i'm going to recreate it so we'll go there and there and now let's look at my drawing again. And let's go to set view. Let's go to perspective. Nope, it didn't like me. All right, we're gonna have to go back to this perspective here. All right. So it is, ah, I see what I did. I'm too low where I cut the section. I'm too low and I'm not actually showing that uh, upper floor. <laughs> That's why I'm getting just a black box. So um, that, that was a mistake on my part. Um, let's go back. I'm gonna open up my original file again. And well, I could probably fix it from here. Uh, okay, so let's go back to my zoom out. We'll get rid of that clipping plane. And I need to adjust the height. Let's go back to my shaded mode here. Ah, yes, there was my mistake. This should be up here not high enough. So we need to move it. So that this goes up high enough. Should be right about there. So now when we create that clipping plane, there and there, and I hide that plane. Go into my set view plan. Why is it not showing it? Well, I'm just full of failures today. All right, let's go. Let's go to set view. Let's go to plan. And zoom out. We're going to recreate that. For some reason, it's not working. Let's take this. Let's turn that plane back on. A new clipping plane. There we go. Let's go to set view. Plan. You're really going to keep doing this to me, huh? And I think yeah. you are cutting between the ceiling and the floor. Is it? Yeah, I was. I was too low on it. Well, I, you know, I think it might be too much work to actually fix it right now, and I probably should just start fresh because that plane was at the wrong spot. See, yeah. see that plane right there. Yeah. I ended up cutting right here, mm -hmm. which is below the floor in this room, which is why I keep getting that black box. Yeah. Um, but given, given what time it is, I don't think it's worth me fixing it for right now. But it shows you that, yes, you can make a mistake. Even I can make a mistake. Um, that, was, that was the problem, is that it was too low, which is what's causing the ultimate problem when I go and do that rendering. Um, even though I'm getting the good results here, I'm too low and I'm cutting through that part of the building so it's not showing. And so this is just a terrible example, but you know, it is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But my collage work, and even if we go over into my illustrator, it's that's how it's showing this too. It's just showing the block of the foundation rather than what the floor plan should look like. Um, so unfortunately it just didn't turn out the way it was supposed to. Um, but that being said, it is 1152. So it's probably not fair for me to keep you on here uh, while I just keep 
screwing around and trying to fix the problem. So I apologize that I was off, but yeah, yeah, even I make some mistakes, right? So all that being said, thank you guys for, for uh, sticking around with me while I fumbled my way through today's lecture. Uh, I think maybe this was the first one that you guys have experienced where it just didn't work the way it was supposed to. Um, so anyway, um, all that being said, I look forward to seeing you in your check-ins. If you came on Monday and you want to come back again today, by all means, come on back. Uh, I know there's a lot of things to, to get through and to kind of deal with. So, um, you know, come back and we'll, we'll keep solving problems. I already talked to Michelle at length this morning about um, some of her assignment 204 issues. So if you're having assignment 204 issues, I'm happy to discuss those as well. All right. So I'll see my first group back at 1210 um, and we'll go from there.